Hello once again everyone and welcome back to our moveset breakdowns for Vermintide. Uh, this is going to be our next big grab bag video which I'm going to be covering a lot of the pole arms that are used by the various characters. So before we get started first off thank you all very much for the support. I know quite a few of you have been looking forward to this episode so we're finally going to cover a couple of really cool combinations and uh, we have a decent amount to talk about here. But we're going to go ahead and start off with the newest addition to the Vermintide um, weapons roster, which is going to be Marcus Kruber's use of the Spear and Shield. Now, I'm only going to do Marcus's Spear and Shield for now. I will probably eventually uh, get around to Carillion's, but for now, I just want to cover Marcus. Now, using a Spear and Shield is not actually that odd of a combo. Um, we have quite a few instances of people fighting with Spear and Shield um, as a dueling weapon around uh, the kind of mid-Renaissance to late Renaissance, so it's not really out of the ordinary. Um, the bigger thing about it that's more intriguing is like a little bit how Marcus uses it, as it is a bit strange. So when it comes to spear and shield fighting, most of the time you're going to focus on the thrust or the threat of throwing the spear, um, which is a pretty big thing. Marcus, on the other hand, is not going to be using this normal grip that I am personally a big fan of, and instead is going to stick to the sword grip for the majority of the time. Now his stance is going to be just right foot forward, spear is held relatively low, and his initial actions are going to be a little bit strange. So his lights, it seems, are going to be cuts with the spear. Now, obviously cutting with a spear may seem a bit strange, but it's not actually as odd as you think. Uh, the biggest thing about cutting with a spear is that you have a very long reach. With two hands, it's not particularly difficult to wreck that cut. With one hand, it can be a little trickier. So what we're going to do here is we're going to lead in with a descending cut from our right side. This is going to be a shoulder cut, kind of has to be, and it's going to be a relatively small motion on our part. If I try to do it with the wrist, it gets away from me and I won't be able to bring it back. So I'm going to go ahead and extend that, kind of lock it to the back of my arm, cut down, and we're going to follow it back with a cut up. So here's that again. One, two. Usually comes in about head level for most Skaven, which is excellent against them. Uh, Chaos Warrior. I'd be a little worried about doing this one, as if I thunk into their shoulder and the spear does not manage to pass through, that could compromise my arm with it. Um, hence why, generally, you want to have two hands in the blade. With a Skaven or something that I outweigh, maybe if I catch him in the head, I don't have to worry as much. Certainly that cut up, I don't have as much to concern about, because if I hit something and I don't go through, my arm can buckle that way, and it's no big deal for me to swing it around. Versus if I hit something this way, it is a much bigger deal, and I can't cut as I normally would with my hand to the inside. So this would be, if I were holding a sword, a false edge cut, which can make it a little bit tricky. But from there, he's just going to launch out a nice simple thrust that tends to put all of the rats down, which is going to be directed kind of inward. So that would be a simple combo. One, two, three. We're done. All right? And this thrust is just going to be a nice little extended one out. Nothing too complicated there. What's more interesting when Marcus does his, uh, his Spear and Shield is going to be his heavies. And it's a small detail, but it's one I appreciate. His first heavy, which he charges back, is going to be low. But his second heavy, while it's directed more high, he also tilts the shield up. So if you want to see the inside of my arm here, for the first one, he keeps it relatively where it is, which is decently flat. For a second one, he turns it up and inward. Now, this may seem like a small detail for me to get excited about, but... Basically what's happening is the first time he just kind of keeps it here and he's still protecting his head, right? The second time when he's attacking from above, he's turning the shield up to protect his inside, which is nice since that thrust is coming from higher and can potentially reach around things. It's a small motion, but I appreciate it because it makes a little bit more sense. So here's that once again. Heavy one, heavy two. And that's pretty much it for Marcus's moveset. Like I said, it's just... The cuts, followed by a thrust, then heavy one, heavy two, nothing too complicated really. Need to see him use one, um, but I didn't expect anything more complicated from our sergeant. Now, moving on from there, we'll be moving to Victor, and this is one that I really, really wanted to do, because uh, it's his billhook moveset. Before I do that though, let me get a little bit more into character. There we go. Let's smite some heretics, shall we? But, when it comes to Victor's use of the bill hook, um, first off, a lot of people tend to refer to the bill hook as a crude weapon. It really isn't. It actually functions very similar to any other polearm that you might use. 
and I have gotten to hold um, actual antiques of Bill Hooks. They're quite light, which I really appreciate. Now, Victor's going to be standing right foot forward in pretty much the same stance as Kruber does when he uses his, um, his halberd, and his cutting pattern is going to be basically the same, right? Down, thrust, then straight down, right? So standard imperial pattern, really. What is interesting is some small details. So his initial cut, pretty much the same as Kruber. His thrust, though, he's going to turn that blade a lot more profile. With Kruber, it was straight in the middle with the axe head in a uh, vertical plane. With Saltspire, he's going to turn it and it's going to slightly jut inward, right? Now, he is definitely using the tip, so he's not trying to bring that hook in or anything along those lines, but it is an interesting detail that it kind of gores this in slightly. I don't know why. Uh, from there, he's just going to recover straight down the middle, nothing too complicated. Now, the other nifty thing about this is going to be when he uses his bash attack or is just firing out um, his, I think it's his heavy combo, I'm not entirely sure. But either way, off his bash attack, he'll do a hand switch, which is cool. So he will guard in a very staff-like manner, bash, then switch to cut, then switch back for his next cut. Now, something very important about hand switching when you have a pole axe or anything along these lines, right? You can do it a couple different ways. You can transition and slide your arm down to make yourself even. Now I'm just mirrored as I was over here, right? Or if I want to do it more quickly, I have my hand below the central point. I put my hand above the central point for a shorter strike, but it can be a more unpredictable strike. And this is actually one of my favorite plays from the Bolognese, um, anonymous Bolognese uh, source on Polax, which is you fake a strike from your right with feint, then you turn it over to step in and strike them much more closely on the other side. I think Victor might be doing that off of his bash attack. So what we've got here is he guards, bashes, the sharp bits over there, so the enemy would be expecting me to then capitalize from here, but instead he's switching and striking at closer range, which is pretty cool to see. Um, and I do appreciate that, because when I was first watching the animations, I thought he was crossing over, which you can still absolutely do, but it seemed odd. Right? Especially for Saltspire. This, though, I think is right in line with him. So, bash, switch, cut, then we're back to the other side. So nothing too crazy there, but I do appreciate it nonetheless. Now, next on the list, we're going to take a slight, uh, we're going to take a slight deviation, and now we're talking about Spear alone. Now, Corellian Spear, it should be pointing out, is a very wide blade. Right? It's a leaf-shaped blade, and I would honestly categorize it almost as a partisan or a spadroon, based upon its uh, size of spearhead and the way she uses it. That being, it cuts just as much as it thrusts, really. Well, almost as much. Now, for her stance, we're going to be staying left foot forward, and we're going to have our left hand uh, presented forward as well, which is excellent, as this is a fantastic way to fight with spear. Uh, and actually, Kruger in his spear alone does the same thing. But... Our basic combo from here is going to be not all that complicated. It's going to be a series of thrusts. So we're here, we're going to thrust one on a relatively kind of low quadrant, recover thrust two on the higher quadrant. From here, we're going to bring the spear point back to cut up. Then we're going to bring our hands down and do a slight flung thrust. Now, if you don't know what a flung thrust is, basically it's where I pool cue it. I relax my lead hand, so that I can slide it between. Very powerful, very long reach, the downside being if you get knocked aside, it's hard to recover your spear back. So putting it at the end of a combo isn't a bad idea, right? So, here's that once again. We're here, we're going to thrust to kind of lower quadrant, thrust to upper quadrant, drop that spear point down, cut up with the spear point, boom, recover back to center, and get that distance. Here's that from the side. So, one, two, three, four. And I think that's a fantastic combo. As one, it's great to see her once again kind of favoring cuts from below. It's a very strong cut though. Um, in fact, that particular cut, you'll see this action where strikes from here used a lot as a parry. Um, so that's really nice to see, especially since it kind of comes in the middle of the pattern, right? Here's the harrying thrust, harrying thrust at a different angle. Oh, I'm tired, my head's open, parry pursue them if they try to run away. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but I kind of like that, right? Now, for her heavies, 
it's going to become a little bit less exciting, right? It's going to be um, just a hard downward strike from a right side, boom. Then it's actually going to be a one-handed thrust from her right. Now, this spear is a little long for that, though her spear is decently long as well. She's going to reach pretty far and be thrusting on that upper line. So, here's that one more time. Rears back, hard cut, rear back, one-handed thrust. Not as excited about that, but still adds a little bit of you know, difference in her movement. Okay, chugging right along. I'm making better time than I thought I would. But next is going to be Sienna's mace. Now, I don't have a two-handed mace handy. Once again, I guess go fund me. But Sienna's mace is an interesting one because the way she utilizes it is not necessarily anything I wouldn't expect, but it's a departure from kind of imperial norm, as we could say, with weapons. Now, let's see here. Yes. Her combo is going to be pretty simplistic, but it does involve an interesting hand switch. So she's going to keep her right hand on top, and it's going to be a simple, let's see, make sure I get this right. Da, da, da. Yes. Okay. It's going to start off with a simple down, right? And she's going to extend a little bit square, but it's just going to be down. Then her next strike is actually going to be a one-handed up. Now, from what I can see of the animation, it looks like she's got her right hand all the way on the bottom and is swinging that through. I think there's supposed to be the idea of she's striking and allowing her hands to come together. This is very similar to a flung thrust, and you'll see it done a lot with axes. The biggest thing about this is now it brings your hands close together, gets you a little bit more reach, and you get a little bit more velocity on that tip. So doing it with a mace, A-OK, -okay, right? So, boom, up, to do that second smack, boom. And then from there, it's going to be just, I believe, yes. Back down on that line, so from here, boom, and she does have her left hand on top of that. Hand switch, boom, back to the beginning. So here's that all again. One, two, three, four. Overall, pretty simple, but it is pretty dynamic, which I enjoy. I'll do it another time. So, one, two, three, four. I like it, it's fun. Um, now our heavies, is where we're gonna get uh, something else a little bit interesting, which is kind of the idea of rechambering, right? So our first hit is going to be rears it up, boom, at that 45, right? From here, her second hit is going to come in at the ribs. Now what's fun about this is sometimes when you find uh, sources on executing the Mochlag, the murder stroke with the longsword, you will find hits tend to go above and then they target another thing on kind of a lateral angle. Uh, the best example of this being Messer. If you watch the so what for Messer, I show off the strike to face, strike to gut, then strike to head. Sienna's kind of doing the same thing here, where she's going to hard strike, hard strike in middle, so I've just either driven them high and or given them a good crack in the head, boom, there's that shot to the lower line to get them bending over or something along those lines. Yes. And then we're going to just hand switch, boom, onto the top from the new angle. So here's that again. One, two, three. Nice and strong. Yes. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and have uh, Barden. Now, Barden doesn't have anything too complicated. I mean, he's a dwarf and max. What do you expect? But he's going to stand very square, right? He's going to be about here. Now, his strikes are going to be relatively simplistic. It's going to be just down from right. And he's definitely doing what I was talking about in regards to letting his hand slide. So down from right down from left, then he's going to hand switch again and throw a kind of very sheer from below, boom, with both hands. Now what's odd about that is that we haven't actually seen a ton of cuts downward, for, uh, sorry, upward from Barton, which is strange since, you know, he's shorter, so he'd be covering his head if he did them. But for the most part, they've always kind of been descending. It's nice to see this as a bit of a change, especially if you're playing the Slayer, because basically what you get there is you've got Boom, hard, boom, hard, hand switch, and this boom, kind of big, almost desperate sort of swing from below, which is just, in my opinion, really fun, and kind of adds to the character's movement a little bit, since it is that big, heavy axe that he's just letting it loose underneath someone's jaw. Now, for his heavies, nothing too crazy, really. It's just going to be 
hard swing, hard swing, we're pretty much done. So, that was the polearm grab bag. We covered a lot in a relatively short span of time, uh, but most of their combos are relatively basic, but we did have some fun things to talk about here and there. Um, obviously, there's still a lot of weapons within Vermintide that I haven't touched yet, um, but for now, I'm going to be going ahead and ending our Vermintide series. Now, we're going to keep doing moveset breakdowns. Um, I'm just going to move on to, for, I was in the middle of doing For Honor when this kind of took off again. So I'm going to go ahead and probably return to that with most likely the Valkyrie, the Centurion, and maybe a couple others. I haven't quite decided. But regardless, though, I hope you guys uh, follow me on to doing that as well as, you know, watching some of the historical content, though. Totally get it if you're just in for the uh, game breakdowns. I really, really appreciate all of the support that you guys have showed me over the past couple of uh, Couple months now of me doing this and seriously thank you all um, it's been awesome to have something like this to work on and I hope you follow me along to the next project so otherwise though uh, you know Sigmar bless this ravage video and we will go over some other techniques another time <laughs>